Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are at Glover Garden, Nagasaki City, Japan, to commemorate Waterloo Day. Thomas Glover was a Scotsman who directly benefited from the victory over the French and the subsequent expansion of the British Empire that began at that time. He began Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and introduced modern shipbuilding to Japan. He also introduced beer making to Japan. Before this could be possible, the hundred years of war, hundreds of years of war between the British and French had to be settled for good. This meant the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte. In 1795, following the French Revolution, a young artillery lieutenant distinguished himself with better tactics and bravery at the Siege of Toulon. He built up an artillery force and forced the withdrawal of the British ships and troops sent to reinforce a French royalist uprising there. He was immediately promoted and soon became general. By 1798, he was the most powerful man in France. By 1801, he was emperor. He further went to war with the European kingdoms and by 1812 was in control of most of Europe. He could not defeat the British at sea though and the small British army in Portugal and Spain under General Wellington caused severe problems to his empire. He decided to invade Russia. He formed the Grand Army from units raised throughout Europe and marched on Moscow. He had 500,000 men. Through delaying tactics and burning everything that could be used to supply and help the French, the Russians managed to force the French from Moscow. Then the Russian winter destroyed the French army on their long march back to France. It is said that only 5,000 men survived the retreat from Moscow. Napoleon, here at the time of the Battle of Waterloo. Other armies rose under the commands of other European powers, the Russians, the Prussians, who were the strongest German force before German unification, and the Austrians, and formed armies to throw off French rule. The British continued their advances into southern France as well as their naval blockade of French ports. Most of the British army became divided to fight America in the War of 1812. In 1814, the Prussians, Russians, and Austrians fought and defeated the new French army at Leipzig. And after the Battle of Nations, the French were almost through. After the last large French army surrendered in the south, the French government forced Napoleon to abdicate to the island of Elba with 1,000 men to have his own little empire. French King Louis XVIII returned to the throne. Napoleon would not stay there. On March 1st, 1815, he returned to France. The army units immediately began to switch sides and follow him. By March 13th, the Congress of Vienna, which represented the other major powers of Prussia, Russia, Austria, and Britain, declared him an outlaw. On March 20th, Napoleon entered Paris, and this began the Napoleonic Hundred Days, as he began again was emperor. The Seventh Coalition of Britain, Russia, Prussia, and Austria then pledged to each make 150,000 men armies to end Napoleon's rule, to be ready by July. After a battle in the south where the French lost, a separate peace was made with Austria. Napoleon had mustered an army of about, of about 126,000 men and were spread about in the north near Belgium. Napoleon had about 107,000 mixed units spread over Belgium and Holland. Blücher of Prussia had about 123,000 men. Together, Napoleon could not hope to defeat them. They didn't know where Napoleon was going to attack. Napoleon decided to attack them before they could unite. He crossed into Belgium at Charleroi on June 15, 1815. Wellington had not enough forces to stop him. He didn't even have enough supplies either. He needed to raise funds. So there was a grand ball at Brussels to get support. Here is Charleroi. This is the road to Brussels. 
Here is the crossroads of four arms, Quatre Bras. Napoleon sent General Ney, Marshal Ney, to move up the road to Brussels with some of his army, while he took the main part of the army to attack the Prussians and Blücher at Ligny on June 16th. Napoleon sent General Ney to move up the road to Brussels with some of his army, while he took the main part of the army to attack the, Prussian, to attack the Prussians and Blücher at Ligny on June 16th. Ney met with Scottish, British, German, and Dutch units at Quatre Bras, who succeeded in blocking the advance for, today, for the day. They did not have prepared positions, and most of the soldiers fought in wheat fields, such as this, under a lot of French cavalry, cavalry attacks. This is more or less what it looked like for them at Quatre Bras. The Royal Green Jackets at Quatre Bras. German soldiers, the Brunswickers at Quatre Bras. The Grand Ball at Brussels where Wellington was trying to raise funds and ammunition and supplies for his army and trying to buy time for his army to group together. The battle for Ligny was quite difficult and was a stalemate until one point in the battle. Prussian command at one point of the battle was lost because Blücher had his horse shot from underneath him and the horse landed on top of him. The Prussian soldiers, the Prussian command, thought that Blücher was dead. It took him a while to get the horse off of him and then he was able to regroup his army and move on towards Waterloo. At the same time, Napoleon had divided his army and sent 30,000 men of his 90,000 total forces in his army under Marshal Grouchy to chase the Prussians. He failed at this and could not find them. They are on a different road and Grouchy didn't really like Napoleon. The road to Brussels from Quatre Bras went through the area of Waterloo. Wellington had already looked at this area a year before and chose this as the battlefield, since the far side of his hill had a reverse slope that would allow him to move troops around without Napoleon seeing them. He could only muster about 25,000 men. Napoleon had 60,000. It didn't look good for the British forces. Here's Wellington's lines. What is not being shown is the reverse slope, which is exactly what Wellington wanted. He wanted to be able to move his soldiers around without Napoleon on the opposite hill being able to see what's going on. Here's a better look of the hills, the two hills, the village of the village of Hougamont and Le Hay Saint in the middle, and the reverse slope. The battle began with the French infantry attack on the small village of Hougamont, which was held by German soldiers in the British Army. It began at 11.30 a.m. This battle took two hours. A general French infantry advance was going on. And here are the desperate British and German soldiers trying to hold the small village in the middle. After a few hours, Wellington ordered the Scots Greys, which were told to be the best cavalry in, the, in Europe, led by the worst leaders in Europe, to sweep the hill of French soldiers and go to the bottom of the hill and return. The leaders forgot their orders and tried to go further to take the French cannons on the other side. They were counterattacked by French lancers. A lance is twice as long as a sword and so the Scots Greys didn't have a chance. They withdrew what left of them, what was left of them, what survived of them, withdrew back to the British lines. At this time, Napoleon had stomach ulcers and had taken a break during the middle of the battle for a few hours. In the meantime, 
Marshal Ney was in control. Wellington decided to try a bluff. He ordered his soldiers to take 100, meter, 100 paces step backwards. Ney saw this and was conned into believing that the British were retreating. They were not. They were pulling to, over to the other side of the Blind Hill. The French charged with their massed cavalry at the British units. The British units formed square and held them off. Very few of the squares fell. Here's another image of the French cavalry attack. Here is Ney waving them on. As the square is held, this is the image of the Inniskillings Regiment from Northern Ireland holding off uh, repeated uh, cavalry attacks on the reverse slope. Napoleon returned to the battlefield and seeing what was going on uh, was very angry with Ney for sending cavalry forward without infantry. He then sent infantry further to take Hougoumont and La Haye Saint. Here we have soldiers at La Haye Saint desperately trying to hold on to the buildings. Wellington was running out of ammunition. He was running out of soldiers. He called his troops uh, to uh, a central location on the reverse slope and got ready for the worst. Either night would come or the Prussians would come or the British would be defeated. But the Prussians did come. Large amounts of Prussian cavalry charged the woods on the French right and caused the entire French army to collapse. The British held well in the center and the old guard broke. They then withdrew to certain places in, on the French hill and formed square to allow Napoleon a chance to escape. This desperate move was met by a British officer coming forward to the French old guard and giving them a chance to surrender. As the old guard had said in answer, merd, which means shit, and they refused the surrender. Then the old guard was wiped out. Hence, this is the end of the Napoleonic era. Napoleon escaped to Paris to try to put together another army. The French couldn't do it, and he was forced to abdicate again on June 22nd. On July 7th, the Prussians entered Paris. On July 8th, King Louis XVIII was again King of France, ending the Napoleonic Hundred Days. On July 15th, Napoleon, trying to escape to America, was caught by the HMS Bellerophon and Captain Maitland. He was exiled to a tiny island in the South Atlantic called St. Helena, where he died in 1821. France would never again be so powerful. The following Victorian era saw Britain ruling the waves and eventually controlling almost all world trade and about one-third of the world. English became the dominant language of international affairs.